So I've finally done it. I am totally like leaving VS Code for NeoVim. Like, I'm gone? Really? Never going to use VS Code ever again? Is that a thing? Did I leave VS Code for NeoVim? Let's find out. Well, I just have to show you this. So this cool extension, mason.mvim, basically allowed like all these LSP servers to like come up and allowed us to basically get these LSP ins uh, servers installed really fast. And I can really say right now, as a matter of fact, that it's now easier to set up NeoVim than VS Code. And I didn't think that was ever going to be possible. Um, I think VS Code is one of the easiest IDEs to set up. But right now, um, I think this is probably a little easier. And that's kind of thanks to uh, this guy right here, uh, Typecraft. Uh, this guy has three or four videos on how to get this thing up and going. And it's like a total watch time of about 25 minutes. And if you do what he says, basically this is the result. If you take a look at like all the things that um, that it has to offer, this is basically like a lot like VS Code. And there's a good reason for this. So the main developer of Mason.mvim now this guy, his name is William Bowman. He's the godfather. Like, for real. He is literally the godfather of, you know, the guy who took all the LSP servers and moved them over to NeoVim. He did this along with other developers like TJ DeVries, who creates really great content when it comes to NeoVim and Lua. I, I just have to say that, you know, Emacs had done this, like, years prior. But... All of a sudden, there was like this real big push to push everything into Lua and then, you know, have these language server protocols. Now, to be fair, you don't need Mason.mvim to have LSP servers installed, but it makes it a whole lot easier. And uh, this is one of those things where uh, I think people should check this out if you're not really that familiar with Lua or... You know what's going on with NeoVim and you just want to get up and going and this is this is one of those ways to do it so let's see what we can do here uh, with all of this okay so let's go back and okay and then then Okay. So now here is a here uh, here is one of um, something that I was setting up for possible a possible video in the future, and so now I have really cool tools. Like you remember a nerd tree? Well, this is something very similar to that, and they call it Invim Tree now. It's really cool. It really works really well. And um, the other thing is, is that I have something else that's just as cool. I have a terminal. Let me lower that a little bit. Now, I'm thinking I might actually change uh, for a different extension for the terminal. Because I'm not crazy about this. But it works fairly well, um, all things considered. Um, so I could make like certain changes. I could do like a lot of different things. This is like really cool stuff right here. Um, now I hit the I. Let's get the, the let's get the virtual environment going. Now I have the virtual environment. Look at it. It's like set up. It's uh, now if I said for example. It works.
this kind of stuff with NeoVim is really cool. Um, just to say the least, it's something that I would certainly use um, quite frequently. And I mean, I, I don't have to be stuck with that per se, but so if I said, for example, oh, oops, sorry. If I said, for example, I wanted to go to my views app, I can do that. There's my views. I think is that. Oh no, that's Python. Sorry. Um, I went. Sorry about that. Okay, so I want to go to my views app, and you can see I'm over there. It's at the press of a button, basically. So I could try like that live grep. So I could say. Um, so I want to come up here. Let's just something random. And here we are. Uh, very simple. Um, there's man pages for everything. So this is Lua basically, but so this has some, um, you know, man pages, and I can go anywhere I want and look at these man pages. And I can specific, I can specify other uh, man pages in this and have like live documentation when I don't understand something or something like that. It's really cool stuff to see, and um, uh, here's some of my other uh, files and different things. And these are just a few of the tools that I would have available to me. And like I said, it just took me a couple hours to set like all of this up. So the other thing that uh, really kind of surprised me um, that was really kind of a shocker to me was that the auto completion has really really improved so just take a look here at my var equals okay so now we will go print So I have language servers for about everything, including HTML, which that has always kind of been a point of contention, having like decent HTML autocomplete. So let's just take a look at it. Um, so So basically, let's just go ahead. A few Vim key bindings. Um, there are plenty of videos out there on these Vim key bindings, but just uh, oh, sorry. Let me. Okay. Okay. Let's just take a look at this. Now this is like really cool. Um, I have matching pairs, so like let's just take a look at it. If I have something like this. I have matching pairs, which is really cool. I, I like that. Um, but I would like, you know, some like the extensions, like if I hit P dot whatever and hit the tab button, then it would actually set up like something like P class equals whatever right I would like that I know that I can set that up with my through with snippets and that's actually fairly easy to set up I just haven't done it yet I'm still fairly new to this configuration as you can see I just have to say that like because of all of this that NeoVim really has an enhanced speed and so like I said, like everything's very snappy and this actually feels really good. This feels to me, this feels a lot like Emacs. Uh, Emacs is very snappy, like everything works. Just snap of a finger, you know, and NeoVim never was that way until recently. You know, I remember the COC servers and 
honestly, like, you couldn't get me to set those up because it took a lot of work and then there was a lot of other problems that, you know, were created because of those language servers and everything was just so complicated and everything and I just didn't like it and I didn't like all the, the extra configuration but I did see like the potential for real extensibility and this is before I actually started learning programming and so I, I just wanted to kind of show you a little bit about how this kind of works so I just kind of want to show you give you kind of an overview so that you can see for yourself just how this works so let's um so you see like you before you used to have like an init dot vim i think it was or whatever it was i can't even remember it's been so long ago that i've had this but it says require plugin settings and plugin config so if you take a look at this right here Really what this is saying is include plugins, settings, and plugin config. Well, you don't see that right here because it's basically insinuating that you're going to look automatically inside this Lua file. Now you see that there's a plugin config, plugins, and settings, and that's all listed right here. So. Now, if you go in here, you have another one, um, another init.lua, and it basically says, go into this folder, which is this right here, and look for all of these Lua files. And you're going to basically include all of these Lua files. That's all that means. And uh, so now you could take a look at like, say, telescope, uh, one of my favorites um, I'm definitely going to be taking a look at this uh, if you go back here to your settings it basically gives you like a list of settings and um, this is basically you know a lot of what was in your init dot vim file and different things so now like here's your leader key this is basically like the remapping of of my escape key because that's all the way up to my upper left hand side well now I can just press GK or JK sorry and I have that and there's a lot of other you know really cool stuff I have this markdown preview I actually want to make a separate video of that altogether because this right here is something that saves me a lot of time and headache it's not like writing markdown files is so tough or that I don't know the syntax or something it's just I do like to have that live preview in case I'm I make mistakes or whatever I also use this for LaTeX this is something that I use quite a bit and it's some really cool stuff it saves you a lot of time and here in the future I'm going to uh, port in an extension for spell check in both English and Spanish since I'm bilingual. So what do you think? Do you think that many will switch from VS Code to NeoVim? Well, leave me a comment in the section below and if you liked this video, man, hit me that like button. You could even hit the dislike button. I don't really care. It just kind of helps, you know, put a few more eyeballs in front of this so that more people can see why they might want to switch from VS Code to NeoVim. I just want to just say, I was just joshing when I said I would never use VS Code. There are things that I still think I would be using VS Code for, but this does replace probably 80% of that, maybe more. And so, what do you think? Leave me a, a comment in the section below, and as always, just have a great day, okay? And uh, if you're um, learning to program or whatever and you're seeing all this extra stuff that all these extra directions, keep your focus, okay? But when you do see something that you might like a little bit better, you might actually go with it. Or you might, you know, put that up, uh, up, up on a list to do in the future. For example, I, I do use Doom Emacs, but I do want to put some more configurations of my own into that 
uh, into that uh, build, that takes time, and I don't have that kind of time right now. Maybe in the future, right? Um, I would like to learn a little bit more in Golang, but that's something that's going to happen in the future. It's not something that I can do right now. And uh, just keep plugging away. If you feel overwhelmed and like you're not getting it, hey, you know what? Everyone was right where you were at. Just keep plugging away every day. Consistency. And uh, you're going to get that dream job that you want. And like I said, just have a great day. And I'll see you on the next one.